Hello everyone, this is George from Invensys Learning. Welcome to our YouTube channel. I am sure you guys might have heard of IT governance. In today's session, we are going to have a brief discussion about what is IT governance. So, without any further delay, let's get started. We will begin this session by discussing a little about introduction to organizational structure. Next, we will move further on to what is corporate governance, and then talk about what is IT governance. Post that, we will take a look at role of IT governance in an organization, and then IT governance frameworks. Finally, we will end this session by discussing about case study. I hope the agenda is clear to you guys. We will now begin the presentation and understand what is IT governance. The first aspect to be understood before going into IT governance is to know how an organization works. So, here, we will have an introduction to organizational structure. Organizational structure of a company is a system that defines its hierarchy. Businesses need a strong structure to attract and retain talented employees, as well as create a workable organizational hierarchy. Choosing the right organizational structure is important because poor organizational structure leads to confusion among employees, poor decision-making among managers and, ultimately, less than ideal results for a business. Each level has employees with specific roles and responsibilities towards achieving company's goals. Organizational structure defines the way in which the roles and responsibilities, power, authority are assigned and governed, and denotes how information flows between the different levels of hierarchy in an organization. Organizational structures are the backbone of any company and crucial for its efficient management. It outlines how certain activities are directed in order to achieve the goals of an organization. These activities include rules, roles, responsibilities, and determines how information flows within the company. There are a total of six key terms in understanding organizational structures in any organization. Chain of control. Chain of control is the unbroken line of authority from the top of the organization to the bottom. It defines who reports to whom in the organization. Depending on the size of your organization, your chain of command can vary in length. But regardless of how long it is, all chains of command clarifies who reports to whom within your organization. Span of control. Span of control is the number of subordinates a superior at an organization can effectively manage. The higher the ratio of subordinates to superiors, the wider the span of control. Chain of control is a direct lineage, whereas, the span of control is widespread, that can reach across teams and departments. Centralization. If decision-making power is concentrated at a single point or by a single person, then it is called centralized organizational structure and this procedure is called centralization. Specialization. Specialization is the degree to which responsibilities, activities or tasks in an organization are broken down and divided into individual jobs. It allows employees to become experts in their own specific areas. Formalization. Formalization deals with how jobs and roles are structured within an organization. It takes into account the degree to which an employee's tasks are governed by rules and other mechanisms. Departmentation. Departmentalization or departmentation is when jobs are grouped together to coordinate common activities and tasks, helping teams to be highly autonomous. The different types of organization structure are functional organizational structure, product-based organizational structure, market-based organizational structure, geographical organizational structure, process-based organizational structure, matrix organizational structure, circular organizational structure, functional organizational structure. Functional structure splits up an organization based on common job functions. An organization with a functional structure would group all of the marketers together in one department, group all of the salespeople together in a separate department, and group all of the customer service people together in a third department. Divisional, product-based organizational structure. Divisional organizational structure is a structure that's composed of multiple, smaller functional structures, i.e. each division within a divisional structure can have its own marketing team, its own sales team, etc. Divisional, Product-based organizational structures are able to be more agile, since each division won't be slowed down by the processes or setbacks of other divisions. This allows for more employee specialization in a team of product experts, from marketing, to sales, to services. Divisional, market-based organizational structure. Another variety of the divisional organizational structure is the market-based structure, wherein the divisions of an organization are based around markets, industries, or customer types. Divisional, geographical organizational structure. The geographical organizational structure establishes its divisions based on geography. More specifically, the divisions of a geographical structure can include territories, regions, or districts. Process-based organizational structure. 
Process-based organizational structures are designed around the end-to-end flow of different processes, such as research and development, customer acquisition, and order fulfillment. Unlike a strictly functional structure, a process-based structure considers not only the activities employees perform, but also how those different activities interact with one another. Matrix organizational structure. A matrix organizational structure doesn't follow the traditional, hierarchical model. Instead, all employees have dual reporting relationships. Typically, there is a functional reporting line as well as a product-based reporting line. When looking at a matrix structure org chart, solid lines represent strong, direct reporting relationships, whereas dotted lines indicate that the relationship is secondary, or not as strong. Circular organizational structure. The circular structure promotes communication and the free flow of information between different parts of the organization. Whereas a traditional structure shows different departments or divisions as occupying individual, semi-autonomous branches, the circular structure depicts all divisions as being part of the same whole. Any company or organization follows the organization structure. Now we are going into the major factors based on which any organization is governed and monitored. Let us now look into what is corporate governance. Corporate governance is the system of policies, processes and rules that direct and control a business's behavior. Corporate governance includes the areas of environmental awareness, ethical behavior, corporate strategy, compensation, and risk management. Discussing and consulting the employees and achieving the goals and objectives, maintaining corporate relations in the interest of business, monitoring the course of direction of the company, and maintaining and adhering to the corporate policies is something corporate governance takes care of. Corporate governance is the framework that determines the relationship between shareholders, management, the board of directors and other key stakeholders. This relationship is crucial in the management of any organization. This also determines how the organization is going to perform in the future and reach its objectives. The board of directors play a vital role in the development of corporate governance policies. Boards are often made up of inside and independent members. Insiders are major shareholders, founders, and executives. Independent directors do not share the ties of the insiders, but they are chosen because of their experience managing or directing other large companies. The board of directors must ensure that the company's corporate governance policies incorporate the corporate strategy, risk management, accountability, transparency, and ethical business practices. Shareholders also play a key role and ensure right directors are appointed to their board. A shareholder can be a person, company, or organization that holds stocks in a given company. On the other hand, a shareholder must own a minimum of one share in a company's stock or mutual fund to make them a partial owner. Shareholders typically receive declared dividends if the company does well and succeeds. Let us now look into what is IT governance. Information technology, IT, governance is a subset discipline of corporate governance. Its focus is on information technology, IT, and its performance and risk management. Just as before building a house a blueprint of the house is designed with all its dimensions to know how it should look. IT governance is like a blueprint that provides a structure to ensure that IT investments support business objectives. Let us now look into the role of a governance in an organization. IT governance provides a structure for aligning IT strategy with business strategy for the effective functioning of the organization. It provides a framework so that organizations can produce measurable results toward achieving their strategies and goals. What does IT governance do? It determines how your company's IT department is functioning overall. The key metrics management needs, and what IT is giving back to the business from its investments. Let us now discuss about IT governance frameworks. IT governance framework is a pre-designed framework that can be tuned as per organization size and needs. IT governance framework provides best practices and controls to ensure they meet internal and external requirements of the organization. The different types of IT governance frameworks are COVID or Control Objectives for Information and Related Technologies IDLE or Information Technology Infrastructure Library COSO or Committee of Sponsoring Organizations. CMMI or Capability Maturity Model Integration. FAIR or Factor Analysis of Information Risk. VAL IT or Value from IT Investments. SEAM or Security Information and Event Management. ISO 27002 or International Organization for Standardization 27002. ISO slash IEC 38500 to 2015 is International Organization for Standardization or International Electrotechnical Commission 38500 to 2015 framework. AS 8015 2005 is the Australian Standard for Corporate Governance of Information and Communication Technology. We will now discuss about a case study where IT governance is being implemented. The case study we are going to discuss is about the Central Bank of Jordan and how IT governance has been implemented in improving its efficiency and management. 
The vision and key objective of the Central Bank of Jordan is. The objectives of the Central Bank shall be to maintain monetary stability in the kingdom, to ensure the convertibility of the Jordanian dinar, and to promote the sustained growth of the kingdom's economy in accordance with the general economic policy of the government. IT governance in the central bank should be followed as per the following IT governance frameworks and standards. 1. PCI standards. 2. Cobit 5 framework. 3. Cybersecurity framework. Let us now look into the objectives of implementing IT governance in Central Bank of Jordan, CBJ. They are. Provide ISO compliant process capability assessments using certified Cobit 5 assessors. Provide roadmaps to meet the standard which include practices and activities required to close the gap between the current and required capability levels. Provide assistance to the banks in the various areas required to meet the CBJ standards. Build and publish a governance framework. Conduct frequent proper reflections, representing the current status of the progress towards the target capability levels. Report compliance towards each milestone. Keeping the objectives in mind, and after successful implementation of COBIT-5 framework, the improvement observed is in the areas of IT policies, enterprise architecture, IT risk management, security, business continuity. Let us now look into the results of IT governance implementation. Overall, using COBIT-5 as a standard was found to be successful. Apart from simply reaching the requirements, banks find that they have an improved level of quality in the areas of IT policies, enterprise architecture, IT risk management, security, and business continuity to name a few. The graph represents the progress of one of these banks in 2018 which indicates a strong increase into level 3. If you are looking for COBIT-5 certification training from Invensys Learning to understand the underlying IT governance framework and tools necessary to manage enterprise security risks. You can attend this training, participants will also learn about robust policy development and best practices to achieve IT controls across the organization. Invensys Learning provides live, online instructor-led training for all levels of COBIT-5 framework certification courses. 1. COBIT-5 Foundation Course. 2. COBIT-5 Implementation Course. 3. COBIT-5 Assessor Course. Invensys Learning Advantage provides interactive instructor-led certification training programs, either accredited by respective governing bodies or in line with their guidelines. Lifetime Access to Learning Management System, LMS. Access to live classes, assignments, and industry-driven case studies. Highly qualified, certified, and accredited trainers.